Hello, my name is Grace and welcome back to Gravecraft. Today we are going to be making a costume for a really cool video game called Blasphemous. So this game caught my attention because of my studies and my passion for art history. So immediately I was so in love with the penitent one and his journey and all of like this religious iconography that's wrapped up in this video game. It's just a really cool game and the character design is out of this world and it has such a great story. It's described as Metroidvania Souls-like. So basically Dark Souls but make it a platformer. Unfortunately, I'm really bad at platformers. So the game for me was more... Yeah, definitely Souls-like. I also took this costume to DreamHack Atlanta, which is a really cool gaming convention. And for fun, I decided to join the competition. Oh, hey, that's my friend. He's really awesome, and he ended up placing in the competition. Back to the real topic here, which is me. <laughs> That's so dumb. I think that this costume is going to be a great way to utilize skills that I already have, while also giving me an opportunity to get better at things like sculpting, molding, and casting. And to begin, we are going to be doing what we know best, which is gluing things to other things things. But before we do that, we need our patterns. And for this project, I'm actually using one of my leg patterns from one of my pattern sets that I have available on Etsy. And if you'd like to check it out for yourself, I have left a link down below. Patterning is probably my least favorite part. And if the pattern already exists online, I'm going to use it. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a very long cone, so I just made my own patterns. Nice. Then from there, we can take our patterns and trace them onto our foam, cut it out, and then my favorite part, we glue it together. Ugh. <laughs> I love barge. I think that's very apparent. When we glue foam to other foam, we use barge and barge alone. And yeah, once the glue is tacky, you just stick your pieces together. Then we bring out our soldering iron to carve in this crest detail on the belt piece. I do some extra squirrel, squirrel work detailing with some puff paint and this always takes me back to cake decorating and I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I'm also using a cake decorating mat for this little pearl strand. I also really didn't care that much about staying 100% true to the character on this build. I wanted to just add random details that weren't there and just kind of make it my own. I traced out the little vine pieces on his chest plate in Adobe Illustrator and just used that as a pattern and cut it out of craft foam. I also decided to separate the flower and the leaf portion. And this is what it looked like when it was all cut out. And I now have a weird puzzle piece to put back together after I dremel in some details. Then apparently I had to do a happy little dance because of how cool it looked. Hmm, what does this look like to you? A walrus? Hmm, think I see the Lorax. Yay! 
Yeah, I'll never be able to unsee that. I'm so sorry. I have to do all of my plastic dipping outside because I just don't have good ventilation in my work area. I did, however, use three layers of plastic dip and then I just used some silver rub and buff. I also wanted to add a little bit more dimension, so I ended up adding some gold as well. And I know some people are weird about silver and gold together, but personally, I love it. So next up is the belt, and I'm really excited about this. Said that it, its diameter was completely wrong than what it actually is. So instead of returning it, what I'm going to be doing is kind of taking out one of the cords, I guess. I also need it to be red. Yes, I'm excited about the belt because I get to do something I've never really done before. And like I said at the beginning, better a skill I don't have, which is dyeing. Fabric dyeing, to be specific. I also ended up dyeing my hands red because I didn't have the proper gloves, but that's okay because it went away after a few days. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and make a tassel out of this guy. And of course, like always, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing here. I was just trying to separate all the strands and untangle them with a seam ripper and a comb. Then I clean them up by trimming them and running them through my straightening iron, which made them just look straight. <laughs> They're not perfect, but I think that just lends to the whole penitent one journey. They're dirty, they're scruffy. They're also made of rope cord, not satin. That's the reason that they're not slick and shiny and they get tangled. Um, but again, I think that just kind of, I think that just kind of helps us out. So yeah, we're done. So I nodded it all off camera because the footage that I got of it was just wacky. Um, I was flipping and flopping this rope all over the place. It just did not look good. But I cleaned it up, trimmed the excess, capped them with some craft foam. Then I attached the tassels using these links. These are actually the links I used for my chain mail for my Ayla costume. The last piece of the belt left is the base, and I used 2mm craft foam and some faux leather. I just made the base out of the 2mm craft foam, then wrapped the faux leather around it and sewed it all in place. D rings on some nylon and then these which are held on with Chicago screw. I glue them on here and these are my straps. The breastplate and the belt are done and they look so good. I'm really happy with how they came out and I do believe that Lobo agrees. Hi, <laughs> Dober. <laughs> and for the last step, I am using the faux leather to create all of the attachments for the knee and for the elbow armor. And with the finishing touches done, it is now time for a snack break. So I started this project back in like 2020-ish 
and I was really unhappy with the way that it was coming out. And I felt like my knowledge and my skills just weren't at the level I wanted them to be at. So I decided to shelve it for a couple years. And unfortunately, this means that at that time I had already created the shoulder pad and sculpted the face. So I do not have any footage because I was not recording at that time. However, I am really happy that I made that decision because I like the outcome of the costume more now than I obviously did back in 2020. So with that, I am ready to finish this. So let's just get back to it and finish. So because I had already created the headpiece, I am now going to be just working on the cone. And for that, I created the pattern out of contractor paper, but then decided to use it for structure. I just covered the contractor paper with 2mm craft foam, and then using my Dremel, I sanded down my edges and gave it some battle damage. Then I scuffed up a foam dowel for the vines that go around the cone. We have our base, we have our cone, which has all of my lines, and I got this 10 millimeter. Ugh, what is this called? My brain is being dumb. 10 millimeter. Oh, did you hear that? decided that I'm going to keep these two things separate so that way I'm able to travel a little better with them. Then I just glue the vine to the coat. It'll be easy peasy. I think I'm just going to use my scissors. Just going to use my scissors. Yeah. Alright, one thorn. Now I just had to make a bunch. Then we attach all those little thorns with some hot glue. Let's go! Alright, this was my favorite part. And not just because I'm using Quick Seal, which is one of my favorite things to use, but because this is where stuff starts to come alive. Look at those textures. Ugh! I also use Quick Seal to create tiny little thorns just by pressing and pulling away. Ah, it's just so cool. I, I loved it. Okay, after priming with three layers of Plasti Dip, I then again just go in with the same silver oven buff.
God, I'm so cool. And then, of course, I have to tip everything with the gold to make it match the breastplate. And what would this build be without some blood? I mean, Blasphemous is known for its amazing, beautiful blood and gore. I mean, there's a whole part where he fills his helmet with blood and puts it on his head. Like, how cool is that? I, of course, have to add blood. And when we feel like we have sufficiently blood splattered enough, we move over to the weapon, the Me Culpa. Oh, okay. This was absolutely a challenge for me, sculpting on such a small scale, sculpting a human, and just so much detail went into this sword. If you play the game, you realize that there's so much lore behind the Twisted Father, his connection to the Mekulpa, and to the Penitent One's journey. He also lays inside of the Church of Custodia's symbol, and is also the main logo for the game. So it's so important for me to get this right. It's also going to be really hard for me to explain what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to be quiet and let you enjoy the process. Really sure how you two will feel about his little member down there and I use little as not in, in that way sorry um, but I'm not monetized already so I don't really care about becoming demonetized so I'm going to keep it in question mark bad can you hear the lawnmowers outside? Oh wow, it's like Pepperidge farm bread. It's open and it still ain't open. The words of Mitch Hedberg. God, I am just so freaking funny. <laughs> this is also my first time ever making a two-part mold, so um, don't judge if it looks horrible. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to fill the rest of it, clean it up with just some water, and make registration marks. I just hope that I made this box big enough. I filled up halfway to the sculpt with some water-based clay and used some marbles for some registration marks. Now this is the whole reason that I really wanted to do this build, is because I wanted to get better at mold making. 
I'm using Mold Star 15 because someone suggested that it works best when doing a two-part mold with water-based clay. I also learned that pouring from higher up helps prevent bubbles in your mold. After several hours have passed and our mold had cured, I remove the box and the water-based clay. Okay, well his head came off and his arm came off. Oh no, and his penis! <laughs> his little penis. After cleaning up the sculpt and the mold, we flip it over and fill up the other side. Oh, and do not forget mold release. Oh, it's ASMR time. <sighs> so our molds came out. They don't look that great, but they came out. So now we just fill them with resin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh was right. He was our first pool, so I expected it to not be good, and our second one was much better. Now we can move over to the sword part of the sword. I am cutting out five layers out of SKS Props 6mm craft foam. One of these days I'm going to own a laser cutter. My whole life is going to change. <laughs> For internal support, I'm using one of those green metal stakes that you get for gardening. All right, I glued it all together because, I mean, you've seen me smear on glue and stuff before, so I figured I would just do it off cam. Yep, and then I take it to my belt sander and sand it down. You can also use sandpaper here. Sandpaper is really great for craft foam and it makes it look really fine and smooth. And now for more quick seal. I, of course, am covering the sword in quick seal so I can add lots of textures with a chip brush and a sponge. Oh, also do not forget to cover the tip of your sword with some super glue. And of course, we cannot forget to add lots of battle damage wear and tear with our soldering iron. And to connect the sword to the hilt, I just had to drill a hole for the gardening rod. <gasps> that noise was terrifying. Okay, just a few things left. So sit back and relax and enjoy these last few steps.
It's done. I finished it. I don't want to keep you here long. I just wanted to quickly say thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. And do not forget to subscribe if you are new and have made it this far in the video so that I can catch you guys in the next one. Now, let's take a look at our finished Penitent One costume. Mm-hmm. <laughs>